Hey everybody, Abolitionist Jay here with another vlog entry. I believe this is number four. Today is May 1st, 2018. Uh, that date is important for a number of reasons. For starters, as you can tell by looking around, I'm still unfortunately recording from my studio in the house that I still own, that I wish I didn't, that the town of Hempstead in New York and Nassau County still won't let me get rid of because, well, they keep giving us conflicting information as to the permit situation with my house and the buyers, uh, the potential buyer's bank, of course, is a little hesitant to move forward until we have all this straightened out and I can't really blame them, but that whole mess is going on still. And also significant on this particular date, May 1st, today marks one year since my arrest. Uh, yes, uh, the my, my arrest for menacing you know, which actually, if you drop the silly legal euphemisms, what actually happened was I was attempting to remove trespassers from my property and I got thrown in a cage instead. But anyway, that's today's the anniversary of that. And I was kind of reminded that that was coming up uh, sometime last week when I recorded an episode of Abolitionist Abstractions. And I mentioned the fact that I thought that that actual that that day I recorded might have actually been the anniversary of the viral post that started this all. But it was actually the next day, it was the 27th, and then once I realized that, it's like, oh, well, then the anniversary of the arrest must be coming up soon, too. And, well, yeah, that's today. So, you know, a year into this whole thing, I still have, as I, as I mentioned in the last court update, you know, that was appearance number 12. So now here we are on May 1st. It's officially been a year. There's been 13 appearances counting the arraignment in that time frame. Still nothing is resolved. I'm still waiting to hear back from my attorney about what the next step is because, as I also discussed in the last court update video, leaving court last Monday was a little hectic. My attorney, you know, I was told to go wait, and then I was uh, my attorney came to talk to me, and then I was told to wait some more, and then I was told to go home, and he would call me, and uh, I, I never, I haven't heard from him since, which I'm just based on our inner based on our interactions and our relationship so far that means that it didn't go very well with the DA so they obviously want to keep pressing on and just either have me accept the crappy deal they've offered multiple times or go to trial and so it looks like we're going to trial and I'm just like I said I'm waiting to hear from my attorney because I'm not actually sure I mean jury selection should be up next but I would like to know for sure because I am going to be putting a call out to people at FIJA, the Fully Informed Jury Association, and any other people I know involved in the jury nullification pamphleting movement to see if anybody is willing to come out my way and uh, do a little, you know, do a little work and uh, pass out some flyers and stuff and try to inform some people around the courthouse in Nassau County about the ideas of jury nullification so that if everything goes horribly, horribly wrong for me, which, you know, I'm dealing with government here, that's always a possibility, then hopefully at least one person on that jury will at least be aware of the idea of jury nullification. And, you know, it could be used to my benefit, obviously, but as I would like it to be used for anybody, you know, the whole, as, as screwed up as the legal system is, if you have the opportunity to nullify somebody being put in a cage or, you know, being punished in some way for a victimless crime, which mine, regardless of how you look at it, there's really no victim here. I mean, there's two people claiming to be victims, but, you know, how do I pay them back for allegedly being scared? You know, how does me being punished in any way? I think I've talked about this recently, too. How does whether I'm put in a cage for a certain amount of time, whether I receive some type of probation, whether I, you know, they, they try to give, give me some other type of punishment. How does that in any way uh, pay restitution to the alleged victims? Well, it doesn't because the whole thing's a scam. But, you know, these are the, the possibilities that I face, so it'd be nice to know that I had some people in my corner uh, trying to help out with in that regard. So I, you know, I'm waiting to hear from my attorney so I can start making those calls because I need to know the date to have people show up here. You know, FIJA is an organization that even though they deal with a lot of, you know, statists, more or less, and I'm sure some of them are statists, uh, I think their cause is great because if, you know, having to work within the current paradigm, I mean, unfortunately, a lot of us are forced to be in this paradigm, you know, as, as myself, I was, I'm forced into this a position with, within the paradigm. So I think that's very helpful. And I've, you know, stated all along that due to the amazing amount of help and, and support I've received over the past year 
whether it was the GoFundMe that was set up for me, you know, without my knowledge last year to try to help out with legal fees, or the one that I personally set up uh, a couple of weeks ago to help out with the situation because I'm I'm still stuck here, and because the the town is holding up the sale of my house, I I don't have a lot, I barely have any money, and I have all this money coming to me, but I can't do I can't get it, I can't gain access to it. I mean, there's almost twenty thousand I think sitting in an escrow account that my attorney has access to. But I can't touch it, you know, and there's the rest of the money coming from the sale of the house, which was supposed to be more than enough to obviously, you know, pay off the house and then pay off all the credit that I had racked up in the past year trying to deal with all this stuff and pay off my car and pay off, I think, all the bills that I owed and still leave my family with enough money that we would have a cushion for six to eight, maybe even 12 months once we get to the Midwest if for some reason uh, my, my my lovely partner Jen does not find the work that she's looking for, you know that was we had this all planned out. Like we had all this lined up, and this was we were we put ourselves in this position that we would have this money, and now that money's being kept from us. So I I didn't think I had a choice. I put a GoFundMe out there myself and asked for some help just to get us through until this finally happens. And, you know, there's been some amazing people that have come through and have been ridiculously generous once again. Uh, and thank, and again, thank you, everybody who, who, has, helped, who has helped me out. Um, but because of all this and because of the screw-ups with the GoFundMe last year, because there was a lot of issues because people kept reporting it because obviously everybody was mad. There was a whole bunch of people mad at me and they wanted to report me for everything. So they kept trying to get the GoFundMes taken down and they were giving, my, giving Jenna a hard time accessing the money. So we ended up losing a lot of the records of who paid what because those campaigns got destroyed and other things. So because I was never going to be able to pay back everybody individually who helped me out, I mean, I do, I am aware of certain people who sent me things in other ways. Uh, obviously, I know who you are, and I've thanked you very, all profusely as much as I can. And I continue, I plan to continue to do so. But my plan all along, uh, along with paying off all my bills and getting myself out of debt completely and trying to set myself, my family, myself and my family up in a good position to start our new life in the Midwest, was I was going to take the money that was donated to me, I mean, obviously I've used it, I've, I've needed it for legal expenses, but I was going to attempt to, to, to do my best to match dollar for dollar. And I, I say this with a caveat is I, I was going to wait until we got to the, got set up in the Midwest and hopefully Jen found a job. And once, once I knew that we were secure with funding again, I wanted to attempt to match dollar for dollar what has been donated to me. And I wanted to take those donations and instead of trying to track down everybody individually who gave me money, I wanted to put it to, to, to a good cause. And my original intent was to split that money in half and give half of it to FIJA, uh, the organization, wh whether they help me in my case or not. I just really believe that they're, what they're doing and what people like them are doing is a great thing. And it's, it's sorely needed because there's so many places that people aren't even aware of during the nullification. I know there are some states, I think there's a handful, maybe more, that actually make it illegal for you to even mention the idea of jury nullification in, in a courtroom, like while you're on trial, like you can't try to defend yourself by saying, hey, you have the opportunity to do this. You know, there's are some states, I think New Hampshire made it mandatory that that has to be part of the judge's instructions at the beginning that, that uh, I may be wrong about that. There might have been another state, but I, I'm almost positive at least one state had it made it a law that they had to let, uh, inform the jury of that because, well, that's part of the whole jury process. I mean, you go back to the common law, common law courts of, of England back in the 16, 1700s. That's how things were done. Like it was left up to the jury. The jury wasn't there just to de decide guilt or, you know, whether they were guilty or innocent. They were there to judge the law as well. And if they felt the law was oppressive or tyrannical or didn't apply, even though the prosecutor was attempting to, to apply the law to this particular situation, it was up to the jury to say in the end, well, you know what? Yeah, this may be a law, but we either think he didn't actually, this person didn't actually violate it or, you know, we don't care. We still find him not guilty. And that's been lost in the American legal system, even though it was, you know, the, the whole American legal system was built out of, out of the English common law system. So, you know, I, I fully intended to, to definitely send some money their way. Like I said, whether they help me or not. I, I feel that uh, secure that they're doing really great work and what's really necessary work. And the other, uh, the other uh, 
half of the the money unless I you know if, if anybody else has any ideas out there of other organizations like that that could use some funding uh, then definitely let me know and uh, I'll try to work out a way that I can try to send a, a but some money to everybody but or not not everybody obviously but different organizations because my original plan was to split you know like I said I was going to try to match dollar to dollar what's been donated to me and then split that between Fija and then the other organization is the Innocence Project the group that has gone around and because using DNA testing and stuff has gotten people exonerated who have been, you know, either on death row or just been locked in prison for years for crimes they didn't commit. And, you know, these people come in and actually help these folks finally get proven innocent and get them out of jail. And again, almost most more likely than not, they would not be involved in my case whatsoever. I would have no need to use somebody like them. But I think they're doing such amazing work and they're doing they're they're filling a much needed void for people that don't really have a voice. And I, I feel really strongly that they're, that they're an organization that uh, definitely is, like I said, needed and uh, could use some help. So that was my plan originally. Once again, though, if anybody has any other ideas of where I could possibly donate some money to, then please feel free to uh, contact me and let me know. But that, that's been my plan. And like I said, unfortunately, I'm just stuck in this holding pattern of waiting, waiting, waiting for the sale of my house to go through. And then even if that goes through, then I still have the whole court case to deal with. So getting out of New York, still have no idea when that's happening. Unfortunately, as the days go by, we also draw closer to the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest in Delton, Michigan at the end of June, which, as I've mentioned before, I fully intend on attending. I fully I fully intend on attending. With my family, I bought tickets for all of us already. I originally thought that my house would be sold by now. The court case would be hopefully wrapped up, and I would be scouting locations and doing some of these videos from my car already. Like that was the original plan when I started doing these vlogs. I said I w I wanted to be. I anticipated being out and on the road, not having a house, and then driving around and all this stuff. And you know, I'm still here. I can't do any of these things yet. I can't even do a lot of the prep work because I, I lack the money until the sale actually goes through. So hopefully that'll be rectified sometime soon. I actually spoke to my real estate attorney this morning and gave him some information that he actually wasn't aware of. So and he was he set off to make a couple of phone calls. He was going to get in touch with the contractor I had hired to do the permits and the supervisor who has given us contradictory information over the past couple of weeks and try to get this all sorted out so that hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we can finally close this deal because the contract does officially run out on May 15th. As my attorney put it today, don't, you know, I shouldn't focus on that because it's kind of like a best buy date. You know, you really should get to it by then, but it's not imperative that you get, by, get to it by then. So, I mean, I, I have, I should have a little leeway in that, in that department, but again, I don't have any leeway in the money department. So I don't need, I can't afford this for this to drag out any longer. So hopefully that will be taken care of soon. And hopefully I will have a more information on that. And then also I will hopefully be able to get the heck out of here. And while I'm trying to still figure out the court situation, I murder dog and I will be in the vehicle as, as discussed. And I will start doing some recordings from there and see how that goes and try to get a, uh, you know, the temporary van nomadism life underway for however long I need to, to get through this process. So we can finally get the heck out of New York and and start our new life because unfortunately, you know, today I'm actually feeling pretty good. I got out and uh, mowed the lawn, which I was really hoping I would never have to do at this place again. You know, again, I, I thought this house, the, the sale of the house would be completed already and I would get to avoid all the springtime rituals. No such luck. And of course, since this was the anniversary of the whole arrest and all the uh, all the attention I brought on myself last year, I also didn't want to deal with the harassment I got over the fact that I hadn't mowed my lawn yet last year when this all started and people were, you know, constantly commenting and trying to report me into the town for having too, you know, grass that was too tall. So I dragged myself out there to do that today, even though I didn't want to. But now I'm a little sore because I in, insisted on saving money years back and buying a, a, a gas mower, but a one that doesn't uh, that's not self-propelling. So I still have to push it around and stuff like that. So I'm a little sore, but I actually feel good because I was outside for a few hours. Beautiful day here today. Um, but despite that, I'm not getting any younger. So the longer this takes, the further I am away, the further away I am from getting to the farm and getting started on that, you know, 
I don't want to be pushing 50 and finally be getting around to breaking ground on this thing. <laughs> so hopefully, hopefully this stuff will be taken care of soon. Anyway, I think that's enough for today. And thank you, everybody, for watching. This has been Abolitionist Jay. You can find most of my content at solpodcast.org or here on Steemit, of course, at, you know, Steemit slash at Abolitionist J, which, of course, Steemit is where I post all of my content first. So once again, thank you, everybody, for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.